when you wear a Rolex, you can learn to appreciate it on a few different levels. First of all, on a superficial level, you can appreciate the size and proportions, the durability, accuracy, and build quality. And then you can go deeper into the weeds and debate the slight changes in the size of the crown guards and the lugs, which caliber is the best, and what is the exact shade of color of the ceramic bezel. Today I'll point out three of my favorite special details of Rolex. These are somewhat subtle but not minutia, and they're still easy to notice. They could be called special features, idiosyncrasies, or even quirks of Rolex. First of all, you can't talk about quirky Rolex without mentioning the Z-Blue Melgaus. This watch has multiple quirks within the same watch. The green sapphire crystal, the engraved case back, and the zirconium blue dial. But my favorite detail is the bright orange lightning seconds hand. It's something unique, not found in any other Rolex. It signifies electricity, magnetism, and its connection to science. The vibrant orange adds a playful color to the dial, and it matches the text of the Milgau's name and the numbers around the chapter ring, and that orange color complements that green sapphire crystal perfectly. Seeing that lightning bolt sweep across the dial, it reminds you this is no ordinary Rolex. My Milgauss has held up pretty well over the last couple of years. It has some scratches on the bezel, and the case design and the movement are somewhat out of date, but overall the watch still looks like a modern Rolex. The case is slightly thicker than a typical Rolex because of the iron Faraday cage inside, which adds to its anti-magnetism properties. But at 40 millimeters diameter, it still fits my six and a half inch wrist fairly well, and the design of the dial uh, looks more on the dress watch side than either the GMT or the Daytona, which I'll feature next. The Z-Blue dial uh, combines with the green sapphire crystal, making the dial overall look like a greenish blue dial. This is somewhat of a loud color and can overpower an outfit, so I like to wear this Milgauss with a plain outfit. This is a scientist watch and the design looks like a cross between the professional line and the classic line. I do hope they bring back the Milgau sometime in the future in some form or another. A blue dial is especially attractive on a Rolex, but within the GMT Master II lineup, there's only one model that's offered with the blue dial. And that's the White Gold GMT Master II BLNR, reference 126719. And this specific color of blue, the Midnight Blue, is not even offered on any other Rolex. So this is a one-of-a-kind blue. And of course, they needed to use a different dial color other than black on this GMT Master II to differentiate it from the steel version. And this shade of blue was the perfect choice. It's a solid matte dark blue, which almost looks black in certain dark lighting. But it also complements the red and blue colors of the bezel when it's out in bright lights. Overall, this blue dial just adds to the appeal of the white gold GMT Master II. On the wrist, this GMT Master II feels very solid 
and the white gold feels heavy on the wrist. The 40 millimeter diameter still fits my six and a half inch wrist, uh, but the very angular case and the sharp corners gives it a more sporty feel overall to the watch. The white gold doesn't stand out too much and this could be easily mistaken for a stainless steel watch. And then again, the accents are still there, which give it a sparkly look to it and a shine to the watch. And my third favorite special detail of Rolex is that a red printing of the Daytona text across the Daytona line. Normally the name of the Rolex is printed in white or black, and if it's a gold model, it will be printed in gold. There are some exceptions, such as the Milgauss and the Explorer 2, which have orange lettering. But the uh, red color is reserved for the special watches or high-end watches. The Daytona is the premier watch of the Rolex line, and each Daytona has printed the Daytona text in red. And this comes from the heritage of the Daytona, and red is a racing color. And on my yellow gold Daytona, this is the previous version that's been discontinued. Uh, they take the coloring to another level with adding red accents to the chapter ring and also the uh, chronograph hand. And along with the Paul Newman style uh, subdials, uh, the red accents uh, make this even further a, a racing style watch. And I still love wearing this yellow gold Daytona. The full gold gives an extra heft to the watch and the uh, yellow gold looks extra luxurious on the wrist. The 40 millimeter case is extra streamlined and sits flat on the wrist. And the 40 millimeter size uh, actually looks uh, smaller on the wrist and it actually looks more like a 39 millimeter. I think on almost any Rolex, uh, you can look as deep as you want and you can find something special to appreciate. Let me know in the comments, uh, what is your favorite special detail of Rolex and what is your favorite quirk of a Rolex?